development and peace, it's a miracle because you have people from the East, Center, and the West. You have people who are French, English. You have people who are volunteers and people who are staff. You have people who are passionate about their things and people who just want to give money. It's really the huge Canadian compromise. From the global north, it's hard for us to sort of see what's happening in the world because we're, in a sense, trapped in our own bubble. Our problems, our issues, our concerns are very, very unique to the global north. We partner with members that are already there and present. We don't bring in a team and sort of change things and make things work for what we need. Rather, we ask them what they need and they approach us with what, how we can support them. Why is it that the world is unjust? Why is there an, a 1%? What Development and Peace did was it, was it concretized in the Catholic Church so much of what I had studied in theology. The whole idea of the signs of the times, of the option for the poor, and of going deeper and understanding the causes of injustice in our world and trying to do something about it. The problem with GMO is that the technology is in the control of multinational companies. We know that the industry uses many starter seeds to push the farmers to plant GMO seed. And every GMO plant and even the farmers themselves become dependent on the industry. It's not right. It isn't justice. It's not fair to the farmer. It makes the farmer become dependent on the industry. There's that kind of energy that comes not from us being thinking that we've got the answers. The energy comes from the questions and the, the, the problems that are raised in the South, sometimes caused by us in the North. Liberate our seeds to liberate our farmers and to liberate our nation. Who controls seeds control life. Now seed is controlled by the industries, life of the farmers, life of the nation controlled by the industries. The problem is we are tempering with nature. And so what is its effect on the environment is still a big question mark. At any time when we have an advocacy campaign, such as the right to water um, against apartheid, um, ecological justice, that we can get tens of thousands of signatures that the other international development agencies cannot get within Canada, right, to advocate for change within our government. The government knows that Development and Peace has representatives from the grassroots, electors and voters from all across the country. And we, because we work from a diocesan perspective and we work from a parish perspective, that gives us that kind of rooting. They need to know what's going on, what is the real score, the real experience of uh, the operation of mining in our country. Here, you are very strict in implementing rules for the good of the people, whereas in other countries, uh, sometimes you are very lax. And finally, look to your left and look to your right, because every face that you see today shows us that we are not alone in our hope for a better world. I think people, especially uh, the folks that we're connected to as Development and Peace, uh, there's been such a strong response to our Create a Climate of Change campaign. People uh, under the inspiration of Pope Francis and Laudato Si and his message to us, uh, people are waking up to how integral uh, ecology is to our faith. I think what Pope Francis has done has been to really affirm 
all of this work that development has and peace has done. To work on the margins, but, um, but to work in ways that would empower the people that build up uh, democracies and participation to, to look at the um, equality of, of uh, men and women, to look at ecological justice, especially with Laudato Si. Sometimes discomfort is a healthy thing, and I think development and peace challenges us to be critical of what is happening in our world. We are that democratic movement in the sense that we question and ask and push for movements and educate. The Gospel is saying, don't turn to only to me, God, and adore me through prayers and sacraments and everything else like that. I'm asking you, God, I'm asking you to turn to your brother and sister in me. You cannot be a, 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 a me without being a we. Canadians are caring people, they are generous people, and, and so this is a way of participating and being a part of, uh, of an incredible movement um, that, uh, that is part of our church and, and part of our faith. It constantly reaffirms me and, and allows me to go deeper and to, and to really grow.